A'udhu Billahi Minash Shaitan Rajeem Bismillahirrahmanirrahim Assalamu Alaikum Warahmatullahi Wabarakatuh Dear viewers, the show, think about it Right now we're in the final and beautiful Ashra of Ramadan The last Ashra, the Akhir Ashra This Ashra is known to be the Ashra of Nijat Nijat basically means safety Safety from what? We've had the first Ashra Which was about Rahma, Which means mercy And it was a time for us to acknowledge the things that we had done like we mentioned before in previous shows that this beautiful month is like a course that every single Muslim goes through. It's a course where we reflect upon how our dealings have been in this dunya. We reflect upon how we've acted and dealt with people. We reflect upon things that we might have done wrong, intentionally or unintentionally. And we acknowledge them and we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for mercy. And once we've acknowledged that, we're asking for mercy, we're fasting, we're abstaining ourselves from food and drink, we're refraining these things, and it is giving us an opportunity to actually reflect upon how blessed we are in our daily lives. If you have a roof over your head, if you're getting three meals a day, Alhamdulillah for everything. And the point of Ramadan is that we understand how the less fortunate feel. We're already blessed in so many ways. And it's time for us to focus on that, and that's what Ramadan allows us to do. But with that, it also allows us to make resolutions in our lives. What can we do better? What are the habits and things that we should leave behind? How can we become better versions of ourselves and better Muslims at the end of the day? Our dua, as always, has been that May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make every single Muslim in this dunya, in this world, in this beautiful earth, this planet that we live in, full of iman, strengthen their iman. Give them actual physical strength as well. Give them that patience that they require in their daily dealings. And make them into role models in every single capacity. That's what a true Muslim is, a person who's able to follow all these different things, who knows the teachings of his or her religion, that is a person who is a leader, nevertheless, in his own or in her own individualistic existence. And from mercy, from reflecting, from fasting, from going through that process, we move on to the second ashra, where we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for forgiveness, the ashra of maghfirah. And we talked about du'as that we ask in the two ashras. <clears throat> now we are within the third ashra, the ashra of safety, the ashra of nijat. Nijat from the hellfire. We're going through a phase where we're asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive us. We're asking for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to show mercy. We're asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to save us. This entire course that we've been through, this last 10 days, is a very blessed time for every single Muslim. And we pray that those people who are not Muslims, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala show them hidayah, give them hidayah. Give them that guidance that they need to come to the right path. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala strengthen their affairs and rectify their affairs as well. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala rectify all of our affairs. None of us have done absolutely 100% honesty or dealt with trustworthiness or dealt everything ideally within the frame of Islam in our daily dealings. And so we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to help us rectify our affairs, to help us become better versions of ourselves. <coughs> In this last ashra, the odd nights are very special. Because within the odd nights, one night is known to be Laylatul Qadr. Laylatul Qadr khayrun min alfi shah. Laylatul Qadr is better than a thousand months of worship. Laylatul Qadr is basically the night when we when we worship and when we pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That is actually the day, the night when the Quran, the Holy Quran was revealed to the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. That's when our religion started coming about with our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. <clears throat> so during the last ashra, our entire course that we were going through so far, the first 10 days to the second 10 days, 20 good days have passed. That means 20 days of us preparing, reflecting, trying to rectify ourselves, bettering ourselves, refraining from food and drink, trying to become more humble in our lives. All those different things might have in tuned us very well. And now in the last ashra, 
when we're actually more in tune with ourselves, our surroundings, our dealings, and we're asking for forgiveness from Allah, now is the time that you pray, make dua, and do whatever you can to the utmost. And subhanAllah, one of those odd nights when it is Laylatul Qadr, it's from the 21st, 23rd, 25th, 27th, 29th. And there are different ruayas on what day Laylatul Qadr stands on, but the odd nights is what we know are nights where <clears throat> we go ahead of ourselves to pray. Qiyamul Layl is something that starts. Basically, Qiyam is a stay or a tenor that you have. Qiyamul Layl means your condition, your status throughout the night, a night that you're going through. You're asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You're asking for forgiveness. And subhanAllah, when you worship on the last 10 days of Ramadan, the Akhir Ashra, the Ashra of Nijat, every single time you worship and you pray, if one of those nights happens to be Laylatul Qadr, which is better than a thousand months, then all of your deeds, all the issues that you've had, let alone rectification, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is forgiving all of your sins from the past year. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is giving you a new chance. Because at the end of the day, as Muslims, if our hearts and our minds, even if we don't understand our religion very well, but if something within your heart tells you that yes, you are a Muslim, within your dealing or within whatever you do, then subhanAllah, this is the time when that little feeling is magnified. And we need to utilize that feeling that we have, that realization that we have that we are Muslims. Bow down, put your head down to the ground, pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. A great dua for the Akhir Ashra, for the safety from the hellfire, is Allahumma ajirni min an nar. Allahumma ajirni min an nar. Ya Allah, O oh Allah, O oh my Lord, save me from the fire of hell. Save me from the hellfire. And that is the main dua that most people ask for in the last ashara. Along with their prayers, along with their different things that they're all trying to do. And trying to become better versions of themselves. With that, I've talked about rectifying our affairs, taking a look and reflecting. But we're going to talk more about reflecting after this break, inshallah. Stay tuned. Think about it. इस रमजान आवाज एंटरटेनमेंट आपके लिए लेकर आया है शानदार रमजान ट्रांसमिशन देखिए जेरो जबर इफ्तार से पहले और क्यामत की निशानियां इफ्तार के बाद आसान दर से कुरान सेहरी से पहले और कुरान पाक उर्दू तर्जुमे के साथ देखिए तकरार लाइव समीना जबीन के साथ रमजान में एक घंटे का स्पेशल शो हर रोज साढ़े बजे तो मनाए रमजान हमारे साथ सिर्फ और सिर्फ आवाज एंटरटेनमेंट पर वेलकम बैक टू द शो थिंक अबाउट वी लेफ्ट बिफोर द ब्रेक टॉकिंग अबाउट द लास्ट अशर ऑफ रमजान वी लेफ्ट टॉकिंग अबाउट हाउ ब्यूटीफुल एंड ब्लेसड दिस मंथ रियली इज वी लेफ्ट अबाउट द ट्रांजिशन एवरी सिंगल मुस्लिम from realization to practice to asking for forgiveness to asking for safety and this entire month of ramadan is so holy it's basically an opportunity for all of us to feel closer to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through prayer through supplication through our duas through our actions and everyday behavior when you refrain from eating or drinking i remember uh quite a few years ago it was ramadan and uh, there was a day when i wasn't able to fast And even though I wasn't able to fast that day because I couldn't get up for suhoor, for sehri, the whole day, even though I could have eaten and drank and had something, I didn't because every time I would pick something up or I would have something in front of me or I'd be like, you know, I could have a glass of water or something, I'd feel guilt inside me. And this is just my realization. There are a lot of people out there who can probably articulate it better and have better examples as well. But at that moment I realized that subhanallah how powerful is this month for a muslim we're fasting for the sake of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we're fasting to reflect we're fasting to understand just how blessed we are in our everyday lives and how we can actually empathize with those who don't have what we have don't have enough 
for those people around the world who Ramadan for us will end as soon as you know the last Ashra comes to an end. We'll go about our daily day, you know, eat, drinking food, meeting, and you know, with people about our daily lives, a bit relieved that Ramadan is now gone and now we can eat whenever we want to. If you wake up late night, midnight, and you have a craving for something, you can have it. If you go to sleep and right before you have to go to school or to work or to your business or your company, and you wake up, you have a dry throat, you can have a glass of water, some juice, some tea, some coffee to help you along the way. You could stop by at that Timmy's or that Starbucks that you really like, go through the drive through at any time, any given place, and you're good to go. Think about those people around the world in different countries for whom every single day is like Ramadan, if not even more testing, where there's no guarantee that they're going to get a meal in that day. For us, we fast, you know, sunrise, we start fasting, sunset happens, we open our fast. We have a nice meal before for suhoor. We have a nice meal at iftar. Not everybody has that. So it's time for us to reflect and actually empathize with people. There's no soul in this world that I believe, at least in my opinion, is that cruel or crazy right now, especially living amongst where we are. There's something or someone, some element that can make someone's heart melt. Whether it's your spouse, whether it's your children, whether it's your parents, whether it's your siblings, whether it be something materialistic such as a phone or a watch or a card that you really like, there's something that melts us. There's something that actually causes us to feel human. It causes us to care. These things that cause us to care, we need those elements and those feelings to occur around for a variety of things. We talked about rectifying affairs. What are our daily struggles? Inshallah, at this time in Ramadan, we all have to give zakat, give charity. And what is charity? It's 2.5% of the savings you've had, of the mal that you have, of the gold that you might have saved, the silver you might have saved, the money in your bank account that's been you're saving for a while now. SubhanAllah, many a times I've, I've, I've noticed this, I've seen this, and I hear about this from different ulamas as well when I look at their videos, when you get to sit down and talk to them as well. And you, you hear them talk about these stories and you witness them too about people who have so much that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given them. They've been blessed in so many ways. They have abundance of finance and you know money and all these different things and you know worldly materialistic gain and everything they have it. And when it's time to give zakah and they're doing their, their calculation of how much that 2.5% would be, they start holding their head, oh my God, this is too much. What would I do? How would I do? SubhanAllah, do you not know that when you give zakah, it takes away the greed from your heart first off. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will bless you with more. And remember one thing. The one thing that scares me, and I'm pretty sure scares a lot of other people too. This concept of hisab, accounting for things, doing your calculations on things, daily dealings, let alone zakah. Daily dealings. When you do injustice with someone on daily dealings, for example, you go to somebody to buy fruit and they're selling fruit out of a cart and they have a weighing machine in front of them and they have like a kilo, uh, a bar or a brick of that, that measures up to a kilogram and they put tomatoes on and they put the last tomato but they hit it a bit harder. So the scale goes up and down and they charge you a little bit more for it. Do you understand that when you do a hisab, you're actually doing hisab with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Especially for zakat. When we talk about zakat, when we talk about zakat and charity that we have to give, we're giving charity to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has representatives in this world. Of course, the poor, the needy, who we give zakat to. It's not their haq, it is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's haq. And the moment you try to calculate and do something or use away or throw that tomato really hard wrong, you are miscalculating intentionally with the hisab between you and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will put people who do wrong with hisab in the deepest parts of the hellfire where their skins are going to burn, be grown again and burned and grown again. And subhanAllah, that torture is something not only indescribable, but subhanahu wa ta'ala, it makes, it, makes, it makes your heart come up to your throat. Even the people that you do wrong with in this world, if there's a poor man, you didn't give him zakah. 
and he's starving. And if the court says, yeah, this guy didn't do zakah, all right, he didn't give you the zakat at time, he didn't give you charity, what should be his punishment? A poor man can say, all right, fine, make him give me double. He could say that, oh, slap him, or let me slap him. Put him in prison for a little bit, do something. But even if you tell that poor man that we're going to burn this person alive, grow his skin again and burn him again, and grow it again and burn it again, even that poor person is going to say, no, that's not, he doesn't deserve this, this is not it. And that is what we're dealing with. Our daily hisab. We're trying to get money off of this place. We're trying to cut our taxes down from here. We're trying to do this. We're trying to do that. Our main taxes are to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 2.5% of what you own is nothing. And the only thing it does is it gets rid of your greed. If you do more than that, then that's sadaqah. You're doing khairat for people. You're circulating finances within a community, within a society, within a country, within the world. You're making a system run and that's the importance of it all. And subhanAllah, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us never lose sight of that. With that, we move on to some other issues that we face and that we see. And I'm, I'm talking about the young kids out there. All my young viewers, especially those in school, college, university, May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bestow His endless blessings upon you. May He shower you with His blessings. Give you a lot of patience. Something that is missing from the new generation at times because of the fact that today's society is so fast-paced. Everything is instantaneous. I remember back when we were children, we used to wait for cartoons to come on TV at a particular time in the day. If you missed it, you missed it. You wait for the next day. Today, when everything's at the palm of your hands, you can watch rewinds, you can binge shows, you can do whatever you want to. Everything is very instantaneous. You want to order something, it arrives the next day, if not the same day. At this situation, what I noticely see as a teacher myself, when I go to school and I teach bright young minds, great minds, kids who have so much potential, mashallah, everybody has so much potential, is that there's a stress and there's a tension there. Maybe it's from your parents, maybe it's from society, maybe it's from your teachers, maybe it's something from your peers. I'll tell you something before I start off. When you grow up, you're going to have enough tensions and stress. Don't worry about it. So you don't need to have them right now. Your main job right now is to focus on the tasks at hand. Focus on the courses that you're studying. Nobody's asking you to get an A star or 100% in every single course. Even if you say that, no, that's what my parents expect. No, that's what my teacher expects. No, that's what everybody expects. There's a competition. I get compared. All those reasons might be valid where they are. But in reality, every single teacher you've had, your parents, inclusive of that, me, a lot of people, 99.99999% of this world, nobody got 100% in every single subject. Nobody. Nobody got 100% in every single course. Nobody. If you like something, you find your calling, yes, you shine there. You like a course, you pursue it. If there are other things, especially when you're at school level, when it's basic knowledge, you don't have to study business and become a businessman, but every single person has a bank account. Every single person has a credit card, understands the system of credit and debit. Everybody has a house that they buy at some point that they're paying mortgage on or lease on, or you're renting a place out, you're a tenant, or you buy a car, you're financing it or leasing it. A lot of things. For all of that, there is a little bit of business involved. So your course is just for you to understand. The main thing is you understand the basics and the basic principles of all these different you know, sciences that you have in front of you, these elements that you have in front of you, about the world in front of you. So that at least when you go on to your tertiary education, when you go on to practical life and you start working, you're not handicapped and you're not completely clueless about what to do or how to do it. You can stand on your own two feet. So everything around you right now, as a young person, if you're anywhere between four years old, all the way up to 17, 18, if you're in high school, obviously, or if you're even above that, if you're in your 20s, early 20s and you're in university, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant you all the success in this world and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make you a model to follow for other people. Ameen thumma ameen. In this blessed month of Ramadan, not only are you asking for Allahumma ajjirni min an-nar, Ya Allah save me from the hellfire. Not only are you asking for maghfirah, for forgiveness, not only are you asking for rahmah, for mercy, but 
it would be wise to make dua for every single aspect of your life. Take away tension and stress. You don't need to have tension. You don't need to have stress. My advice to parents who might push their children at times, who might expect things at times, the biggest issue of the 21st century, and these are not my words, this is research, this is statistics, this is, you know, different surveys that have taken place, questionnaires that have been, you know, handed out, university level, school level, Islamic schools, Christian schools, Judaic schools, public schools, universities, even on the streets, at supermarkets, malls and stores. All this information is coming from there. A lot of young people are asked, how often do you communicate with your parents? How often do you have a conversation with them? And a popular answer, 80% answered this, that when they do something wrong, their parents are at the forefront, either scolding them, yelling at them, shouting at them, trying to explain to them what to do, and giving them comparisons of their time to now or to a child who they could compare to, a cousin, a friend, a classmate, or somebody else. But when they do something positive, they don't get that much light. They don't get the same amount of attention. And I believe that parents nowadays running out both parents are working most of the time you're outside your house you're doing a lot of work you're trying to make sure you earn that bread and butter you try to make sure that you keep that roof over your family's head it's all noble and great and when you come home if you see an issue obviously from a stressful day anything can tick you off anything can be a trigger may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala remove those triggers from your life may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give you the patience my dear parents I'm a part of your team as well I'm with you but at the end of the day, what we need to do is we need to be able to have conversations with our children. We need to be able to encourage them, motivate them, and make them feel a bit lighter. Let them vent at times. Just as we vent. Just as we have circles and places to vent. With that, our daily dealings will be affected in a positive way. The, the Akhir Ashra of Ramadan is going on. And yes, it is the Ashra of Nijat, of safety. We talked about Rahmah, mercy, and it's not just you asking for mercy from Allah, but it's also you practicing showing mercy to others. We talked about the second Ashra, how it's an Ashra of forgiveness, and how you're asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for forgiveness. And that's all great and good, but you're also practicing forgiving other people. You're giving other people a clean slate as well. You're not using things against them, especially once you've forgiven them on a topic or something. And then you're asking for safety. Nijat from the hellfire, not just for you, for your family, for your near and dear ones, for your friends, for Muslims. And you go broader on that aspect. Similarly, help people be safe. A Muslim, a real Muslim is that who helps or defends his brother or sister when they're not in presence. That means if you go to school and a classmate didn't come up today, and the teacher is asking some questions, some issue happened, and they blame that student for it. Don't make up stories, but say that I don't know if he did this. He's not here, he was probably doing it. You try to save, you try to defend your brothers and sisters. That's something that's very rare to find nowadays. We need to be able to defend one another in any presence, in any given circumstance. We're basically saving each other. That's what we're supposed to be doing as well. So we're not just asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to save us from the hellfire. We're also doing our best to try to save others from the hellfire. And how do I mean hellfire? Yes, daily dealings on one side. But you're also praying for them. Meet your friends, talk to them. If you have a vice, if you have a bad habit, if you do something, if someone has lied to you or lying is something that might have been uh, become a second to nature type thing, na'udhu billah, inshallah khair. You try to rectify them. You talk to your friends who you know who might have these habits. Hisab, when you give charity out, try to make sure that you give it out with a happier heart. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give you back and more. The only thing you have to do is open your heart a little bit. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us all people who are rid of greed. Make us all satisfied with what we have. And if our lives are not running with what we have and it's, it's difficult to get by. That means you can't make rent or you can't make mortgage, you can't pay your bills. Ya Allah, make it easy for you. Give you the necessities, give you what you need to function in this life. Ameen Ya Rab, Ameen. 
With that, insha'Allah, the blessed celebration of Eid is coming, Eid al-Fitr. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us all strength. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us all the ability to be better people, to want to be better people. There's not much a lot of people can say on a show or come up. I mean, mashallah, different alims and ulama, when they talk, when you have different sheikhs and shaykh talking about a variety of topics, listen to them. Because believe it or not, every now and then you get to learn something. But furthermore, we have to rectify our affairs, especially when it comes to hisab. When we're doing dealings with people and we try to cut some money out or dig some money from somewhere or be short with our calculations, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala keep us away from that. Ya Allah, help us all. Inshallah, I hope and I pray that this Ramadan has been fruitful for all of you. Inshallah, we all pass with flying colors through this wonderful course and we, we feel like better human beings. Being a teacher, being a presenter, being an assessor, an examiner, being somebody who's driven Uber Eats and skipped the dishes, being somebody who has taught at university level, being somebody who has worked with schools, within an entire city for a provincial level and a federal level, being somebody who's been an auditor too. I, I can easily tell you this, that words don't come that easy when you want to describe how our relationship is with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and how we want to be better. The only advice I can give you guys, and I can give myself at times, is that keep a positive approach on things. Think positively towards things. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will make things more positive for you. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that I am that what my slave thinks of me. So think of a positive world and think of an Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who is ar-Rahman and ar-Rahim. And inshallah, all of our sins are forgiven. All of our shortcomings are forgiven, intentional or unintentional. We become better versions of ourselves. We're able to support one another more. We don't slack off or try to cut corners when it comes to calculations and hisab and money and dealing with people. Inshallah khair. Until next time, take care. Think about it. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.